But, of course, there's uh, only one place to start, and that's with the game last night as England breezed past Bosnia. But, of course, the question we want to know is, can you really learn anything from a friendly? Tonight in Newcastle, when the likely lads are featuring, but can those with a stake to claim enhance their chance? And to Hermic had his left hand full of the shirt, and this is going to be a penalty to England. And here's a big moment. For Cole Palmer. He runs up four paces, left foot, it saves it to the bottom right hand corner. Palmer's first England goal. Jack Grealish will take over. Onto his right foot, clipping it in. Trent Alexander Arnold, up on, coming around the back and scoring. Picture book second goal for England. Alan Bowen's effort, he pops up and ends up being forced over the line by Kay. What an excellent second half from England and a standing ovation from many here. Yeah, 3-0, that was the score in the end, 03717 if you want to have your say on what we're just about to talk about. I have to say, I loved England's kit last night, the away kit looked, looked mega. good, didn't it? Yeah, the little seam down the side of it, it looked really lovely as yeah. well, it looked really nice. Uh, lots to talk about, lots to talk about, where should we start? Here's my question to you, right? We're going to talk about players, could they be playing their way into Gareth Southgate's 26? Yep. And I'm sure he is probably playing certain players for certain minutes, wondering whether or not players can play themselves into his squad. Yeah. My question is, is, surely a manager, this is not me picking on Southgate, it's any manager at this stage, just before a competition, surely they know they're 26 by now. If you're playing a play in a friendly for half an hour, for 20 minutes or whatever, and you're thinking, he's got a chance of making it. Mm. I mean, what have you been doing for the last... No, but I think my, maybe some of it's to do with the injuries we've got. So you, you might have an idea of a 26, but then three or four of them are carrying injuries and you're like, oof, I'm undecided about... Who can go into that? Okay, role. like a Trent, right? Yeah, because I, I almost feel like because Trent's a right back by trade, but his performance last night, and I've said it on this show with you many a time when we're talking about midfield threes. Mm-hmm. I've said Rice, Trent, and Bellingham, and Trent's performance last night was outstanding. Um, but I, I do think there was a few question marks last night, and a few that were answered. I thought, I thought you, you got hiccups. No, you got the burpees. No, a little rub on the back. <laughs> Look, <laughs> nice. No, so I, I thought there were some good performances last night. I know it's a friendly against Bosnia. Yeah, but I do think there were some questions asked, and I still think there is a few where you go, mm, I'm not sure. But I think some Pickford was it was never under any scrutiny. He was always going. I thought Konza did all right. I yeah. thought I thought uh, Conor Gallagher. I thought played really well. Yeah. Uh, obviously Cole Palmer, what he, what he does speaks for himself. I, I, I adore Cole Palmer. But for me, Eze was the one where I went, okay, he's the one who staked the claim where Gareth might just go Ooh. street footballer. Yeah, dribbles with the ball. Horror. He's, he's, someone put on our WhatsApp group. I'm not going to claim this is my own. It might be in producer Joe. He said um, that Eze is Jack Grealish before Pep got older. Jack Grealish. Yeah, because obviously. And, and by go on. Because obviously Pep almost changed Jack Grealish into a system type player. Yes. Whereas as Ebertry is he is when he got the ball he goes past people. Uh, when, we, he, when he when he drops that shoulder. Even I go through it. I'm sitting at home watching it. Even I'm like, Ooh, yeah. wow. <laughs> do you fall off the couch? Yeah, do you know what I mean? When he drops that shoulder. I yeah. mean, he is so talented. He's brilliant. But I do think there was a few There's a few positions I was a bit like... Like, Gerard Bowen's had a really good season, I think, for West Ham. But again... I, it's that step up to the national side. Not as much a step up, but he just didn't look as comfortable. A little bit errat- erratic in his play. Um, Watkins? See, that's the one where... And you know, it's, it's tough for me to say that about Watkins because I've been Ollie Watkins in that exact same position where you've, you've played for your country before, you've had a really good season, scored a lot of goals, and there are still question marks about whether you're going to go to a major tournament. The guy's got 27 goals in, in all comps, but just, again, didn't look comfortable playing last night. Maybe the service wasn't great. I think he had an early chance as well. Um, and I think a lot will depend on what happens in the next friendly, I think. Because I think if Harry Kane starts and plays like 70 minutes, which means Ivan Tony's only got 20, Ivan Tony doesn't go. Ollie Watkins um, definitely goes. not taking three right, no but if Tony starts and plays as well as he did against uh, Belgium when he scored the, got the, the penalty mm. scored the penalty looked comfortable brought people into play then he might be in the driving force and that sounds bonkers because Watkins has got 27 goals uh, a quick word about Branthwaite only played half an hour I hope he starts the next one so do I yeah. he, he needs more time in the England shirt yeah so, but uh, Gahey Dunk not, got no problem with no. either of those but Obviously, the, the first pairing in Stones and, and Maguire just haven't played enough football. No. And I'd be, I'd be fearful, even though they'd have been the best two, and they have been for a while, which I, I totally understand, I would be fearful going into a major tournament knowing Stones hasn't played much football and Maguire. Yeah, I agree and, with you. And no natural left-back. 
Just three that out of four that he like... Ooh. Which is why the six in front of them is so important we get that right. Yeah. And this is one of the questions we're asking, right? Not who are the six, because everyone on the planet agrees when everyone's fit, Kane, Rice and Bellingham are guaranteed. Yeah. You, no one can argue with that. Kane. Right? Kane down the middle. Mm. So you've got, I think you've got two space up for grabs either side. This is my view. Yeah. And then I think there's one you've got Rice and Bellingham, so there's one more. I think there's one. Okay, but that's that's why we're going to ask what the three are, the mm. three that are missing, okay? Mm. So it's one in midfield and either side of Kane. That's yeah. what I want people to find out. So okay. my, my three, the middle of the park, I'm now sticking Trent. His range of passing can win a game. Yeah. One, 50, 60 yards. Don't do that. We don't... That's my thing. Sorry. One, you do the sound effect for me. One, then one of them. So I think Trent has to start yeah. with Rice and Bellingham. I think that'd be exceptional. And that means the other two I'm putting in, I'm putting Foden on the left because yeah. he he has to be in that team. Yeah. And on the right, and this will upset you. I know you're going to say. Soccer. I'm putting Cole Palmer. Yeah, no, I'm playing Because soccer. I just think Cole Palmer is an unbelievable talent. No, he's, he's a man on form at the moment. So Saka. I think he's had a better season than Saka. Okay, but you're talking about one... Well, this is a, my view. No, but you're talking about one having a 9.5 and one having a 10. Yeah, well, I'm picking the 10. Well, no, Saka for England's been okay. the player of the year last two years. All right. Well, yeah, but he's not England's best player. I get that, but for the last two years, his form has okay, been better. I'm not going back, I'm going forward. No, yeah. Right? So we're asking who the three are. So my three are Foden, Palmer and Trent. Because everyone knows Kane, Rice and Bellingham are guaranteed. Who are your three? Saka on the right. Yeah. Foden on the left. And I'm, I'm going to go Trent because I've always said Trent. Okay. But I wouldn't mind Maynou. Maynou oh, sits yeah. Declan in the eight, Bellingham doing what he does. So I'm torn between Maynou and... Trent. Which one are you going for? But right, Trent's range of passing, as you said, Can is ridiculous. Yeah. And even his goal. We're not even talking about that. I know. Beautiful. Just stroked it in the corner. Uh, there you go. So we'll talk about the game. I want to know who your other three are, because three are guaranteed. The three are guaranteed are Kane, Weiss and Bellingham. Who are the other three? That's how we start today's show. We'd love you to be a part of it. Uh, let's speak to Mark, Spurs fan. Hi, Mark. Hi, chaps. How you doing? I'm great. Very well. How are you today? Yeah, really good. Really enjoying your show, boys, as That's always. That's uh, nice. look, for me, I think. Look, the two standout players in the Premier League this season, English players, have been Palmer and Foden. For me, they've they've got to start. You've got to have Foden in the number 10 role. I'd have Palmer out on the left, and it pains me to say it, but I'd have Saka out on the right. For me, there's no place for Trent in midfield. He's, he's got to be at right back with Walker as a centre-back. Where, where are you playing Jude, then, if you're playing Palmer as a number 10? So, I'm just playing Jude and Rice, pairing in the midfield. Rice just taking a deeper role and, and Bellingham pushing on. So I'd, I'd pair them up two together with Foden just in front. Do you know what? I, I, you know, I like it, Mark, but the only thing is you take a little bit away from Bellingham is by restricting him a little bit. Yeah, you are. And I think that the beauty you've got with Foden and Bellingham is they both can interchange, can't they? Bellingham can push forward, Foden can sit in. I just mm. think Foden, Foden's been unplayable this year and to play him out wide left where he's not going to see as much of the ball would just be criminal. I agree. And you've got that. to get Palmer. Mm. It's, it's, it's crazy because you like, Thanks, it depends which one you like. They've both been phenomenal, Bellingham and Foden. Do you know what I mean? So you want to see them both in their preferred position, but unfortunately both of them playing almost the same position. Is, is it a little bit lampard Gerardi? A little bit, but I think there was, if I'm honest, I think there was clear daylight between them two. Like For me, Steven Gerrard was so much better. Lampard's numbers were incredible, but I think Gerrard was so much better. Yeah. These two is like, flip of a coin. I personally think Bellingham's better. I think he's got more more like more powerful more physical control games a little bit more yeah. Foden's just elegant isn't he can do whatever he wants so it's a flip of a coin yeah okay but we've got to get them both in right yeah they both have okay. to start uh, Steve's up next hi Steve hello Andy Paul how you doing hello Steve you good yeah very good thanks very good yeah great show guys thanks man off you go what would you like to say yeah um, basically so, um, for me it would be Palmer out on the right mainly because I'm a Chelsea fan mm. There's no other way to call it. They're quite similar. But I wouldn't play Alexander Arnold in midfield because I think you're going to restrict Rice. I think you need to play two there. So I would go with Maynou and Rice so they can sort of alternate. Mm. I think we restrict ourselves there. If we sort of... Rice is too good. It's probably the best player we've got. And I'll go Foden out on the left. Um, yeah, play it that way. I think Rice is just... Yeah, he's unbelievable. Is, is there anything to be said? The, the last caller said if you play Foden on the left, you sort of you, you lose a bit of the magic because you're playing him out wide, which I understand because I would play him there purely because I need to fit him into that starting eleven. He has to start for England. But do you think that's a fair point? He's not playing in his yeah. preferred natural position. I completely agree. But I think with the if you if you play Palmer on the right and then Foden on the left, 
they're players that can swap and change. They they can do that. They can go out wide. They can both come in the middle. I just think we can't restrict the players. If you if you're putting them, if you're playing Rice on his own at the back, you're restricting him, and that's that's losing the balance of the team. Mm-hmm. If he goes forward, no one's going to cover him. I just yeah. think for me, having someone alongside him, it, it frees Rice up, and he's going to be such an important player for us. Okay, Steve, thanks for that. Let's quickly go to Tom. Hello, Tom. Hello, mate. How are Love you? Love the show as always. Thanks, man. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. Um, yeah, uh, look, listen, boys, I think Palace, Eze's getting a lot of the praise, but Adam Morton, since he's coming in January, I think he's been fantastic. Mm. I think that he's, he's doing things that I'd, have, I'd expect uh, Declan Rice to be doing at Arsenal already. Um, the, way, the way he moves forward with the ball, is, he's so progressive. I think that he, he should be starting next to Rice in, that, in, that, in, that, in the holding two. Jude in front of him. I think, I think you're right. Foden should be in, in the centre, but you just can't leave Jude out of the ten. No. But I think Adam Wharton, the, he, he's the big one. I think Instead of Maynu. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I haven't seen enough from Maynu. I think he had a good game against Liverpool, but I just think Wharton's been, he's been fantastic. I think he's done a lot for Palace. Uh, I wouldn't be surrised if uh, the ball club comes in from next to you. OK, mm. thanks, Tom. Is that Tom saying that he's watched more Palace than United? I still look at you up because he's, and he's an Arsenal fan. Yeah, no. Yeah. Now that was. Um, Wharton did really well, and I think he'll definitely go. Um, but I think Main is ahead of him. Cause just because yeah, yeah. Main played in his last international looked comfortable at that level. And also the cut final was brilliant. Exactly. So it's funny because we've had how many, about four or five calls. They're all different. All different. Yeah. And did any, none of them said Trent, did they? Midfield? Uh, uh, one. I th- no, I think no. you're right. No. Someone's put here. Um, why are we talking about Trent in midfield? He played against a second rate international team in a friendly. Yeah, but you can only judge. Exactly. But that's what, England in their friendlies, but, they, they play a lot of those games. But we know what Trent's like. We yeah. know what he's got. That range of passes. We know what he's got. Do you think Southgate knows his 11 for the first game? I think he knows who he'd like to play. But as we sit here today, he's like, oh, no idea. I think he's, again, No idea? No idea, but we know the goalkeeper is. Yeah. We know the right back is. Yeah. Centre halves to left back, I don't know. I think we know two of the midfield players. Mm-hmm. I think we need another third. And I think that left hand side up front, I think he's like, ooh, I'm not sure. Well, even now, that's yeah. a worry, isn't it? Yeah, I think Saka okay. and Kane, he's like, ooh, who's the other one? All right. You think definitely Saka? Yeah. Well, that like Gordon didn't get a minute last night. No, I know. That, was, that was very strange. He yeah. must have been devastated. Trust me. Talk Sport Drive. Super opinionated sporting debate. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.